we step into the sports science laboratories in Ghent, Belgium to examine the role of exercise physiology in athlete preparation. Next to the coach, there are several roles that play a part into the optimal preparation of athletes. I'm one of the exercise physiologists that might help based on exercise tests that we perform, be it in the climate chamber, being on the device that they perform the exercise on. Based on the test results, we can advise coaches to adjust the training schedules and to train in an optimal way. Exercise physiologists at the lab conduct tests in a controlled environment, collating specific results for each athlete, which ultimately will help to define their maximum physiological training regime. So we will do a test in the climate chamber to check how much sweat he will lose during exercise in certain climatological conditions. We weigh him before the exercise and we will weigh him after the exercise again to see how much body fluid he has lost. Next to checking how much fluid he's losing, we will also attach sweat patches to collect some sweat, which we will analyze after the test to uh, check uh, on the electrolyte loss, how much sodium and then how much chloride there is in the sweat to be able to adjust his hydration strategies really accurately. We put them in the tube and then we squeeze them out. So we have an amount of sweat. 72.8, so now we know during a half an hour of cycling in conditions similar to the Olympics in Rio, for instance, that he should drink during an hour approximately one liter of fluid to remain in a similar fluid balance and to maintain his performance. If we can analyze the sweat samples, we will know how much sodium bicarbonate we need to insert into the sports drink to maintain as well uh, his electrolyte levels. The next test Boone performs is with lightweight single skull world champion Eveline Paleman, assessing which energy sources she is utilizing during exercise. Eveline is performing a rowing test in which we measure gas exchange. The gas exchange tells us something about her thresholds, about her physical preparedness, as well as her VO2 peak. We are measuring pulmonary oxygen uptake, that's how much her body is using in oxygen. We are also looking at her carbon dioxide production. If the number approaches one, that means she's using more carbohydrates than fat. Using a near-infrared spectroscopy device, Boone can also assess the levels of both hemoglobin and myoglobin proteins that bind and then deliver oxygen to the body. This is a near-infrared spectroscopy device. It sends out near-infrared light, and based on the scattering and absorption of the light, we get an, an idea of the concentration of oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin and myoglobin. Based on these data, we can see what an exercise intensity does with the O2 supply to the muscle. So if we see a change in the concentration of the hemoglobin that carries oxygen, that gives us information of how much oxygen is transferred to the muscles and the oxygen is important to be able to perform the exercise. So we have to look really into the details to, to be able to prescribe training more accurately.